prep is today's podcast. My name is Jodie Bunting and today's special guest is Sam from Small's Kitchen. She's the chief chef and owner, also known as the Broccoli Queen. Welcome to the podcast, Sam. (laughs) Hey! (laughs) Now, the best way to introduce you, Sam, is to show them what you do. So what I've got here is what Sam has delivered to me this week. So you might just think it's a just a paper bag, but it isn't. It's first of all personalised with my name. It's got a little handwritten tag there. Thank you, Sam. (laughs) And then inside, we've got this container. It was full when it was delivered. I was going to say, I didn't deliver it empty. (laughs) (laughs) And then I got this, this shaped one. And then just to to manage my uh, people's expectations of not getting three things the same, you get three different containers of three different things. (laughs) Now, Sam, I am a weirdo and I order your vegan meals. That doesn't make you a weirdo. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think many people order vegan from you, do they? Do you know what? I've actually, recently, I've had like three or four of you only order my vegan dishes every week. Ah. So, I don't know if you set the trend or not, but... Well, um, I'm pleased about that week. because I hate to think you just slaving over the kitchen just for my vegan <laughs> thing. So I feel better about just that. Just for your vegan needs. <laughs> just, just in case people are wondering what they were, this week I had a vegan bean chilli. Now, the most important word on there is the word chilli. That was hot this week. <laughs> You helped me drink my water this week. I need to I was thank saying, you. Yogurt or water? What did you go for? <laughs> yeah, definitely water with that. Uh, then this was the vegan sweet potato basil quinoa bowl with lemon tahini. Now, are you a fan of tahini? Because most people don't know what tahini is, do they? And I'll be honest, I don't think I knew what it was probably until a couple of years ago. I'm educated you... and I know I'm for it. Great. Because I used to work in Egypt and they have tahini on everything. For those those of you who don't know, basically it's sesame seed paste. It's a little bit like hummus, isn't it? That sort of texture. Yeah, that sort of texture, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was pleasant. I've never had lemon tahini, so that was nice. And then inside, there's a little bowl where that tahini is. And, and I'm used to normally getting my hummus in one of those little bowls as well. So again, we're going to go on to the preparation of the meals in a minute. And then my final this week, this was my favourite, Sam. This was the vegan peanut chickpea Buddha bowl with jasmine rice and kale. And she's even she even puts little things on there that say heat me or freeze me, something like that. I just love the way, Sam, it's kind of fun, isn't it? You've really thought okay. about it. <laughs> You've thought about it. I'd like to think so. <laughs> So let's get into then how I heard about you as well. Um, so I have a client in Scotland who's got a food prep company and he, he used to send me all these menus saying, oh, where, who should I, what meal should I go for this week? And I used to sit there like dribbling, thinking, oh, these sound amazing. I wish I had a company like that near me. And then I thought back to one of the personal trainers at Everlast Gym on Pride Park in Derby, and she told me about Small's Kitchen. She said, oh, this lovely girl in uh, Oakwood who uh, does this meal prep, she she even delivers, she even brings them to your door. What more do you need? So that's how I heard about you. So Sam, tell us all about you. First of all, what is your personal fitness story regarding food? Probably 10 years ago, a little bit more than that, all I ate, my staple diet, was a Sunday dinner, chips and beans, and spaghetti carbonara. That was all I ate for years. Yeah. And chocolate. I've always, eat, I've always eaten chocolate. Um, then when I got my, got with my past part, previous partner, he was very into fitness. It wasn't necessarily a foodie, but was very into fitness. So he was kind of introducing me to new food. So I kind of broadened my horizons a little bit when it came to food. Yeah. Um, and I widened my palate somewhat, that's for sure. I wouldn't have even entertained a curry 10 years ago. It wouldn't really? Even have been, no, it would not have entertained it. I wouldn't have even entertained a vegetable, Jodie. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I broadened my horizons and my palate somewhat um, in the period that I was with him. Um, that relationship ended anyway. And then my partner now, he is a massive foodie. Um, he has a yeah. massive follow on, on Instagram. He set this Instagram up just before COVID, 
But through COVID, his Instagram went absolutely mental. He now sells his food as well. But it's still only a hobby for him. I then set up Small's Kitchen following a comment that my personal trainer made to me. So when I started with this personal trainer in Dali Abbey in just before lockdown it was, he said to me, Sam, send me pictures of what you're eating. I want to see what food you're putting in because it's not just about what we do in the gym, it's about what you're eating as well. So I was sending him photos and I, unbeknown to me, apparently I was making them look quite good on the plate. I'm not good yeah. at that at all. Um, I was sending him photos and then one, one of the sessions, I was on the horrible bike thing. I hate that. Yeah, um, the one where your arms and, got forwards and yeah, back. Yeah, that one. I hate that. And Nick will kill me for saying that as well, but whatever. <laughs> um, so I'm on this bike and he said to me, Sam, you know you could sell your food? And, I, and this is just before COVID. And I was like, what are you on about? He said, I've got a client who is local, but he hasn't, he's really busy. He hasn't got time to cook. He doesn't know how to cook. So all he's doing is going to a supermarket, getting a meal deal, um, and therefore not consuming the best calories and nutritionally wise um, for his training plan alongside with his personal trainer. So I was like, okay. So he gave me this guy's number. Oh no, he gave him my number and he texted me and he was like, Sam, I'd be interested. Could you, uh, yeah. could you meal prep for me? And I was like, yeah, all right. So I cooked for myself and cooked for him at the same time. And in my first week of trading, and I wasn't even like official, I didn't have a social media. It was yeah. nothing official at all. Um, and that first week I sold 30 pounds to him and 10 pounds to one of my friends because she ordered a couple of meals as well. At that point, I was, run I was working from a A5 notepad with yeah. the recipe on, the quantities, who had ordered, etc., how much they owed, when they paid, all that sort of stuff. And then from there, it just kept going and growing and going and growing week on week. So all of a sudden, I was furloughed, but all of a sudden I had this business that was growing every week. And then post-COVID, my old job asked me if I wanted to go back and I was like, I've got a decision to make here. I either go back to my old life, which was in weddings and events, or I go full force Smalls Kitchen. And I chose full force Smalls Kitchen and here I am two and a half years later. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. And all just because your personal trainer said your meals look great. Yeah, literally that. And I, I, to be honest, I hear a lot of the similar things. A lot of my slimmers post in my Facebook group and people say, I would pay money for you to make me that. So <laughs> it's so good that you actually listen to your PT. Not many of our clients listen to us, by the way. So it's a good job that you, it's a good job that you listen. And again, I'm just I'm so eternally happy. grateful to him. Eternally grateful. <laughs> so you said earlier about the, you know, you used to live on chips and beans and stuff like that, which again yeah. is many of our clients. What kind of, was it just your partners introducing you to different foods or did you get bored? What was it? I, th I think that probably played a massive part, particularly when I got with my current partner. He is a massive foodie. He he now makes me, he doesn't make me, but I will now eat Asian food. I wouldn't have yeah. entertained it at all. Um, and there's still a couple of things that I will not entertain in a million years. Um, bananas being the main one. I will not touch a banana within a 46 mile barge pole. <laughs> <laughs> um, unfortunately, I don't care how good they are for you. They're not coming anywhere near me. It's not um, a bad thing, by the way. I, I oh. tell all my people to have local food. And as you know, bananas are from the other side of the world. So don't worry about that. <laughs> Love that. Love it. Um, so, yeah, I, I think because I almost, as I matured and grew up a little bit, I had my son, I became more nutritionally aware. Yeah. And clearly, you can't sustain it healthy lifestyle on chips and beans twice a day so i had to do something about that really <laughs> and what sort of um do you have any guidelines when you're thinking about your meals and stuff is it all generally high protein because that's any of the gym kitchen things they're all about high protein is that what you focus on not necessarily i focus on balance i want carb i want veg i want meat or if it's vegan the the, ve the vegan substitute or alternative yeah. um and the quantity of those now i am not nutritionally trained i've researched a lot i've spent a lot of time looking into what we should shouldn't eat etc 
And it wasn't until maybe 12 months down the line of Small's Kitchen that somebody said to me, and I'm sure nutritionists listening to this are gonna tell me otherwise now, but someone said to me, in one meal, in one sitting, your body can't consume more than 24, 25 grams of protein. So for me to then put in a dish 70 grams of protein seemed like a a waste of my money because I was just doubling the meat quantity, but be a waste of the ingredients and the resources to do that. So why would I do that? So generally, I try and stick my dishes to around 500 calories or less. um, And that protein margin around 20 to 25, 30 grams of protein per dish. So, yeah. I've also read recently as well that if you have too much protein, it actually just turns back into carbs in your body as well. So like you said, there's actually, there's no nutritional reason to have loads of protein as long as there's, there's some there. Exactly. When I when I first started this, I was under the illusion that I'm working out, I want to gain muscle, I need to eat loads and loads and loads of protein. Give me a protein shake for breakfast, give me protein pancake for my 11 snack, give me 50 grams of protein for my lunch, give me another protein shake in the afternoon. Whereas that, and don't get me wrong, I did try that at some point, that played havoc with my stomach and that was, it's just not ideal. I don't yeah. recommend anybody does that. Yeah. <laughs> So how did you go from then making foods for your friends to these beautiful boxed items? Was that a progression or did you think, right, this is my business, I'm doing this, this and this? I'll be honest, there was never a business plan. Dragon's Den would kill me because I would not walk (laughs) in with a business plan. It all comes from here and goes to the kitchen, basically. Um, When I first started, I was going to the range every week and I was buying packs of five containers because that's all I needed when I started. They had blue lids and the labels. So you've got, you can, on your containers, you can see the printed labels. Yeah. When I first started, I was using parcel tags, you know, like the craft brown parcel tags. Yeah. Threading a piece of string on them, handwriting what the dish was, (laughs) handwriting the calories and sellotaping it to the lid. Oh, but if I were to handwrite every label for next week, I'd still be here. Yes. Next month. <laughs> but, you know, the good thing is, this is how good businesses start. You know, you've got to put the work in, you've got to put the effort in. And it's also that personal touch. Just like I said about the little tag with my name on it, it's this yeah. personal touch which people love. So, haven't yeah. you found that? I'm, I'm all for the personal touch. and. Previously, I've always worked for big organisations and whilst personally I would try and give the personal touch because I was in weddings and events, I wanted that to come across in my business as well. I wanted yeah. to give people that sense of, oh, it is coming from an actual real person. It's not a factory. It's not a conveyor belt of curry, yeah. quinoa, kaku, salads or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I wanted that personal touch. And I, as much as I could print those labels now for the name tags because I've got, like next week, for example, I've got 45 customers. I still haven't. In fact, just before I came on with you, I've sat upstairs in the office and I've handwritten everybody's label for Monday. Oh. I've done it. <laughs> you see, now I now I'm starting to understand why you why you like your orders in as early as possible, so you can get all this prep done. And that, yeah, that's exactly the thing. Like, I'm a mum. I have one little boy. He's seven, and I I ask for orders in. I mean, I've changed it now to Thursday night, but. I do a lot of the prep on a Friday and the reason I do that is so that I can have some of the weekend with my son because I cook everything on a Monday. So when people are like, oh, why can't I send you the order on Sunday? Because I need to label your containers. I need to make a shopping list to do the shopping over the weekend. I need to work out which protein balls you need and potentially make those protein balls. So I can't, it doesn't just happen on a Monday morning magically out of thin air. There's a lot of prep that people don't know about. to to be able to do it on a Monday. To be honest, when people look at your advert and look at these meal prep things, I think they imagine it is in some industrial kitchen where you've got every item that you need for your whole menu. I think this is the misconception with small businesses. They actually see them as a Weatherspoons where everything's frozen and ready (laughs) to go. But the truth is not at all. Everything's fresh, isn't it? Yeah, completely fresh. And that's why when I had a meltdown in Aldi the other week about the red pepper saga. Um, That's why I have to have all the orders in advance because if I didn't, well, nobody would have been getting peppers with the dishes this week because it was quite a nightmare. (laughs) You also messaged me once about quinoa. You had a little bit of a night, no, not quinoa, with corn, wasn't it? Yeah, so corn isn't vegan, it's veggie. 
Um, yeah. It has a dairy product in it. Oh no, it has egg in it, I think. Yeah, it has egg, egg in it. Um, so yeah, I had to text all the people that had ordered it to say, look, really sorry, can't get vegan mints. Are you okay with the veggie corn? Yeah. Um, so, and everyone was fine. I didn't have an issue with anybody. But if I didn't do that, I, I run the risk then of lying to my customers and that's not me. I'm never going to do yeah. that. So I had but to be I, honest and say, look, can't get it. Is that all right? But, I, you know, I think stories like this as well and being contacted make people aware that you're a real person really shopping for their fresh food yeah. as well. So I actually think it's not a, a bad thing for your business no. as well. No. So I've got to ask you, what is your favourite? So look, out of all, have you got six weeks menus? Is that right? Oh, yeah. What is your favourite dish from all of those? Oh, it's one that I think needs to be more popular, but maybe it's the wrong time of year. So it's a chicken cranberry sunflower seed salad, but it has a raspberry vinaigrette with it. In fact, I used to have a customer that every time it came round, he would order six portions of it because he loved it. Um, anyway. Whenever, so when I make the meals, I make one extra of every dish every week for me and my other half to eat through the week. Whenever it's that week, it, my other half said to me the week, I've not, never even tried that dish, and I was like, it's because it's never allowed for you, it's mine. <laughs> so in two years, that, that dish has probably been on my menu for two years, and he's never tried it, wow. because I always bag it for myself. <laughs> it must be so good then, if you, don't, if you don't let any of your family members have it. No, not they're not touching that one. It's too good for them. <laughs> and let's talk about protein balls. We'll tell people in a minute how they can get a, a free box of protein balls. Oh, yeah. But the, you, is the 12 or is the 14 different protein balls? Nearly, 16. Si oh, 16. Sorry. <laughs> What's your favourite one of those? Oh, chocolate brownie. I'm a sucker for that one. I am a chocolate addict. And when I make that protein ball... So yesterday, I posted on Insta... We, I had staff in yesterday and we rolled a thousand protein, well, 990 protein balls in a day. And we roll a hundred of each flavor at a time. Um, and the brownie batter, I have to leave my staff to roll it because if I roll it, I eat more than I roll. It's bad, it's really bad. So I have to yeah. just hold back and say, look, I can't touch this. And that just I'll goes to off, show. I'm not it. <laughs> that goes to show how good they are as well. <laughs> I've got a couple of customers, like I've got one customer who's been with me from day dot, bless him, and he has six of those, that, that protein ball every week and he never changes his order. Every week wow. he has six. For, for anybody out there that's never had a protein ball, what is it? What's in them? So my protein ball, they're, they're healthy snacks. So where previously I would quite easily sat, sit and nail a crunchy or a Mars bar or a cream egg or seven, um, they're a healthier version of your, your sweet tooth craving that you have after lunch or your 11 snack or whatever it is. They're all full of natural ingredients, seeds, nuts, dried fruit, dates, peanut butter, maple syrup, honey, protein powder. Um, and I just mix them all up. I'll, I'll try on new flavors for days, weeks sometimes until I know I've got the recipes right. Yeah. Um, so that's how I've ended up with 16 flavors now eight are vegan eight are non-vegan but still the vegan ones if you're not vegan you'd still eat the vegan ones if that makes sense yeah plant-based food at the end of the day isn't it yeah it's not like a, in a protein ball i'm force feeding you i don't know tofu or something they're all yeah. just like nuts dates fruits seeds etc so yeah so, talking about meal prep more broadly, um, what do you think are the benefits of people meal prepping their food? Have you heard of a guy called the Meal Prep King on Facebook? Yeah, I've got his books down there, actually. Oh, have you? Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah what, do you, what, what have you personally found are the benefits of meal prep? I think, for me, when I first started doing it, and this is pre-business life, and I was just doing it for myself, it frees up your time for the rest of the week. So whilst you might look at it in a, oh my God, I've got to spend four hours on Sunday afternoon prepping for the week. Yes, you have, but you've then got no cooking to do for the week for your lunches or for your dinners. And it also then I find curbs the need and the want to go to the chippy at lunch or to a supermarket and get your sandwich, your packet of crisps and your chocolate bar for £3.50 or whatever it is. Yeah. I really think it curbs that because you've got it made in the fridge. All you've got to do is take it out, stick it in a microwave and your lunch is ready. Um, and another thing that I always find handy, and especially with having a seven-year-old, 
I have a lot of meals made in the freezer. So if I'm making something for the family that is freezeable, I will make sure I make extra and then I'll portion it out into my containers because clearly I've got a lot um, and stick a portion in the freezer for Henry when I've got football night or swimming or whatever it is and I need a quick meal. He's yeah. got something in the freezer that I just whack in the microwave and he's, he's fed. Uh, an interesting fact that I found out as well talking about this thing is that electric car owners lost weight when they got their electric car. Have you heard about this? No. Because they no longer went in petrol stations and they didn't have the temptation. Wow. So this is exactly the same with meal prep. The more you can stop shopping, the more you can stop going into the kitchen, the easier it is to lose weight. So there's That's your why point. I don't lose weight, because I'm always in the kitchen. It Now it makes sense, Judy. Yes. <laughs> so just, you know, for anybody who loves food, I'm a, I'm a trained chef. So for anybody who loves food, just being in the kitchen is a nightmare, isn't it? We love food so much. Yeah. We want to just try this, this and this. And that's the problem, like on a Monday when I'm meal prepping, I, I weigh all the dishes out and stuff, but I'm like, I need to test it, quality control and all that before I serve it to all my customers. So by the time it comes to Monday lunchtime, I've already had a mouthful of peanut chickpea bowl, um, curried chickpea salad and three portions of chicken. But <laughs> I've seen that you offset your food though on a Monday. I've seen your schedule when you post it on Facebook. You do your meal prep and then you go for a big run, don't you? I try to. Oh, is that, is that not the schedule every week? Marathon. I'm training at the minute, so yeah, at the minute, I mean, I've got three weeks until my half marathon, and then after that, let, let's see how much I carry on running, hey? Okay. <laughs> you either love it or hate it when it comes to running, so... Uh... I, don't, I don't love it or hate it, to be honest. I think when I've got something in the diary to train for, I'll train. We'll if go. there's nothing booked in, I'm not training. Especially not when it's snowing. Who wants to do it in the snow? Yeah, definitely not today. Right, it looks very pretty. It actually looks like Christmas behind you, by the way, because you've got a lovely tree with snow dripping oh, down it. We could that's be. That's my tea plant that I'm very proud of. I can, oh. I, currently, I can keep a plant alive. Yeah, <laughs> congratulations. Hello. <laughs> right, now talking about nutritional advice, nutritionally, what have you found has worked for you to help you keep fit? Again, it's just the planning and planning and discipline. So, meal prep. 100% recommend to anyone um, but the discipline as well so again I've got a seven year old and don't get me wrong he's not really a sweet tooth kid I, he is my kid but I don't understand why um, <laughs> he doesn't eat dessert he doesn't eat sweets he doesn't eat yogurt he doesn't eat ice cream so I don't buy it for him but previously I would buy it for myself yeah and now I find myself making better decisions when I'm in a supermarket so I will go and buy yogurt I will go and buy fruit I will buy flapjack, but I won't buy chocolate-coated, salted caramel, lotus biscuit flapjack. So I'll just make better choices. <laughs> <laughs> I think just, for a lot of meal prepping, I, I think much of it is common sense. I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist, like because yeah. I'm not, and I've managed to make a business out of it. Um, I think much of it is common sense and just prepping, prep, prep, prep. Yeah. Prepare I your meals. Like the week after, if you know you've got a busy night Monday, you've got football on Tuesday, all of you are there around the table on a Wednesday, plan each meal for each day. So you're specific, you know, we're having spag bol on Monday, we're having cheeseburgers on Tuesday, whatever it is, just plan it, plan it, plan it, plan it. I think what you mentioned there about the example of the, the uh, flapjack is probably a good reason why a lot of people associate prepared meals with unhealthiness because the retailers, they put extra sugar, salt, fat on it to make it yeah. sell faster, don't they? Yeah. And this is why process or processed meal ready prep in the supermarkets have got such a bad name because they put a little bit of a touch of badness on just to make them sell faster. I think retailers, though, there's been a massive shift because of the whole obesity crisis, etc. I do feel like there's been a massive shift. Like when you go into the till now, the point of sales are often protein bars as opposed to chocolate bars. Yeah. The chocolate is now at the back of the supermarket, so you have to physically go looking for it. Which is Whereas good. before, it was the opposite. And I've definitely found that, well, it definitely helps me because I'm not a till buying a crunchy or a marble. <laughs> <but. laughs> and again, one of my slimmers called Catherine from Derby, she's actually lost eight stone in 2021. Wow. Get this though, 
just eating ready meals. She's a big fan of Asda. There's a, there's a brand called The Gym Kitchen. Obviously, yes, she didn't know about yes. Small's Kitchen. Uh, but your it's meals now. are very, very similar to The Gym Kitchen, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, I've tried them. And what did you think? They're obviously not freshly prepared like yours, but... No, so the, the shelf life obviously has to be longer on them. Um, they are, they're all right. They taste all right. They taste great. Um, I don't know. I've... I, I, I mean, it would be stupid for me to go and buy them. That would be ridiculous. Yeah. Um, for anybody that wants that ease that doesn't live in Derby, um, they're great, obviously. Like, they're significantly better than getting a ready meal spaghetti bolognese, ready meal spaghetti carbonara. I used to live on Tesco spaghetti carbonara. Yeah. I loved um... it. Down in cheese, it was gone <laughs> in seconds. <laughs> And again, this is why a lot of retailers use pasta and manufacturers, because pasta is cheap, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's the other thing for when it comes to prepping, making sure you've got a few staple ingredients in your house at all times. Yeah. In this house, don't, don't get me wrong, I've got a very equipped kitchen. My utility room is full of products for protein balls and nothing else. Um, but making sure you've got staple ingredients, making sure you've got tins of chopped tomatoes, tinned veg like black beans, chickpeas, salt, pepper, ginger, garlic, pasta, rice. You can always make a meal out of that. Yeah. And they're not, they're inexpensive ingredients that go a long way. So just make sure you've got those staples. You can make a very basic, simple meal a little bit more exciting with the basics in your house. I'm loving this advice. It's, it's basically it's life not. advice, never those, mind. Those are bordering off me for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> Right, now let's talk a little bit about fitness. You said about running. Do you do any other fitness? Have you found anything else has personally helped you? So I have, so post COVID, I, a very good friend of mine, she used to live miles away, she's moved back to Derby. She trained for her personal trainer qualification in COVID. And I now go to her every week. Don't I, Abby, I turn up every week. Um, <laughs> so I go to her once a week and then I run. Um, so that is my fitness, I'll say at the minute, like I say, as soon as that, this half marathon's done, I kind of need to put something else in the diary or I'll go back to just seeing Abby once a week and doing nothing yeah. else, but yeah. And then moving from fitness to lifestyle, you are a busy mum and you literally, I'd love to say you work full time, but I think you work more than full time, don't you? In all honesty, I swear, if one more person says to me, you only work on a Monday. <laughs> I think I'm probably going to blow my top. <laughs> and they think you just work for them two hours in the morning. Yeah, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, all I do is just cook on a Monday and it just it magically <laughs> appears in your houses. Um, yeah, I mean, something that resonated with me towards the end of last year, my son is seven, very aware of technology. He's got his tablet, he's got his Nintendo Switch. He has screen time. He said to me, Mummy, put your phone down, stop working, you're always working. I was like, whoa, okay, rewind. I don't need to be working all the time. Yeah. So I do now make a conscious effort. When I picked him up from school, my phone is down and I will try my best. Bearing in mind my work phone is my personal phone as well. Yeah. Um, but I will try not to at least be on my laptop or in the kitchen prepping or whatever it is when I've got my son because he is at school five days a week. Um, and whilst it's hard, if it's like next Monday is an inset day, unfortunately for Henry, he's gonna have a lot of screen time that Monday because it's a Monday. <laughs> but similarly, flip side of that, I want him to grow up understanding that it's important that you work, you need to yeah. work. It's not all given to him on a plate. Yeah. He will come to work with me. So on Saturday, I'm at David Lloyd doing a pop-up. Henry will be coming with me and he will earn some wages because he will. He knows how to work my till. Um, oh, yeah, he's a good person. Um, so I think that's really important. It's important for me to switch off both personally and for him, but important for him to see the importance of the need for work and working hard. So yeah. I, don't, I don't, my balance is getting better. Let's just say that. Do you send him to school every day with one of these and two protein balls? <laughs> I just had that thought in my mind. That would be hilarious if I did do that. Um, however, I'm working on it, but I have the fussiest eater known to man living in this house. So oh, I'm working no. on him. Yes. 
So he's back to your child, as, is he then? Chips and beans and spaghetti. Oh, oh, it won't even eat beans. Won't he? Wow. No. He's more of a spaghetti hoop sort of guy, is he? He won't even eat that. <laughs> Honestly. I, I'll tell you what he can eat, not what he won't eat, because that's a, a smaller list. It's easier. <laughs> yeah, but it is history repeating itself. It's just me. Now, I heard you on the radio a few weeks ago with Twiggy. You were doing his um, quiz thing. How was that? Twirdle. Twirdle, um, yeah. That's it. Um, yeah, very random. I don't even know how that happened. Um, we were on the way out with the kids. It was half term. I was with my friend in the car. We had two kids in the car and very random. Did you enjoy it? Um, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, my general knowledge is shocking. So when he asked those questions, I was like, Leona Lewis, yes, I've got another one right. I was far <laughs> too excited about getting basic questions right. But anyway. Now I did go through your social media and did see what your partner sells. Would you like to share, every tell everybody? <laughs> oh dear. Um, so my partner is Tipsy Cook. Um, my partner has around I don't know, 12 or 13,000 followers on Instagram, so he's absolutely trumping me. Um, he is the complete opposite to me. <laughs> yeah, he is. You're like polar opposite. I can't believe you're a yeah. couple. Yeah, no, we are complete polar opposite. Um, so there's two things that really irritate me from the general public or friends, family. The first one is people that say to me, you only work on a Monday. The second one is when people say to me, don't understand why you're not the size of a house living with Tipsy Cook. Well, because we don't have cheeseburgers for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Like, who does that? I mean, it's all about balance, exactly. Yeah. Like, we both eat a pretty decent breakfast. Rich will take my meals to work for lunch. Oh, and great. he always cooks tea. I don't cook tea. He always does tea. Okay. Um, so yes, tea's not always, well, it's never macro calculated, that's for sure, because Tipsy Cook's cooking it. But yeah. I like to enjoy food and I'm not gonna restrict myself or limit my life because I only need to eat 300 calories for this meal. I'm not gonna do that. How often does he cook his uh, Tipsy meals? Um, At least once a week, we'll have something really quite naughty. Um, But he's just started doing it as a business as well. Oh, so like last Sunday was his first Sunday box that he did. So he sold Sunday dinners. But Tipsy, I don't really know how his brain works. It's not normal. Um, but you know them turkey dinosaurs that kids eat? Yeah. He made in this Sunday dinner box turkey dinosaurs. So he put a whole Sunday dinner in a dinosaur. Like, who thinks of that? Well, they tasted great. They sold amazingly. And we got to eat the leftovers. So winning. <laughs> I feel he's had he's been having some good chats with your son about business ideas. That sounds like a kid's <laughs> idea to me. So he did once also make my son. Um, it was a massive plate with a volcano of mashed potato with turkey dinosaurs in it. He made turrets with gravy coming out. So the, it looked like the volcano had erupted gravy. Um, and then the peas, a broccoli was trees around the edge of the volcanoes. Genius. I don't know how that brain works. For me, it'd just get a plate of turkey dinosaurs, mash and peas, ER, eat it. But or, how yeah. to, but you know, most kids will just die for that castle of food, wouldn't they? Yeah, Where, exactly. as, as we know, normally they wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we, nobody knows how Tip to Cook's brain works. He has <laughs> notes on his phone that is ridiculous suggestions, but they always work. So, he's winning. Right, Sam, can you put all your tips together? I know it's hard to do, but can you give us three top tips for meal prep? Yes, I can. Okay. Clues in the title, prepare. Yep. Prepare your meals at least a week in advance. So you know what you're doing the following Thursday. You can plan your week around that. That's number one, prepare. Number two, pick a meal prep day. So if you know, I don't know, you're less busy on a Sunday afternoon or whatever, kids are quite happy playing with toys, whatever. Do it on a Sunday, spend you three, four hours prepping. Um, number three, always pick freezable options, like at least a couple of freezable options where you can make extra. So if, if one night it's spaghetti bolognese, plan to make six portions and freeze two. So you've always got backups in the freezer. 
And again, this is why I love my little kit, because one of mine every week is freezable, isn't it? As it's written on there. Yeah. Right. Now, we always ask our guests a topical question. Now, all the supermarkets, in fact, all the shops right now are full of Easter eggs. What is your favourite chocolate? What egg are you looking forward to for Easter? I bleat on about it all over my own social media. I am addicted to cream eggs. Oh, yes. One a day keeps the doctor away until Easter. And then when you can't get them in the supermarket, I have a fit because that's it. I can only get them between January and April. And then that's it. I have eight months a year where I can't eat a cream egg. Is there a cream egg protein ball? No, because I'm really funny. I don't like anybody messing with my, pro my cream eggs. So I would never buy a cream egg ice cream or a cream egg brownie. Just give me a cream egg. Don't mess with my cream egg. Even cream egg ice creams. Have you seen those? Yeah. Yeah, McDonald's used to do a McFlurry of it. No. Yeah, it's got to be the real deal. Just one. I've got five in the kitchen. I've always got them in the house. <laughs> At this time of year, it's bad. Did you know the consistency between an Easter egg is different to a normal bar of chocolate? Have you heard about this? What, the consistency of chocolate? Yeah, so one of my slimmers, she's addicted to Easter eggs because they put more fat and oil in the Easter egg chocolate to make it round and Molding, shiny. Yeah. Did you know that? I didn't know that, but that would explain that I have a slight addiction to them as well. Like I will buy the pound Easter eggs and just nail an Easter egg. And that also explains why those little cream eggs taste better than normal chocolate, because there's more fat and oil <laughs> in them. I don't ever, but, I can't bring myself to look at the calories or sugar content in a cream egg, because I'll be heartbroken, <laughs> so I don't want to know about it. <laughs> right, we'll stop talking about that. Uh, we have to tell everybody, where can they find you? Because the good news is, if they mention the word Jody, my name, they will yeah. get some free protein balls, won't they? Yeah. But you also do a great offer for first-time members, don't you? What's that? Yeah, so any new customers, um, I do a discount for your first three weeks. So first week, you'll get 40% off. Second week, 30%. And then your third week, you'll get 20% off. It sounds like Hello Fresh to me. You're so organised, aren't you? <laughs> That's two and a half years in the making. It didn't happen overnight. <laughs> and where can people follow you online and where can people order? So I'm on Smalls Kitchen on Facebook and Instagram. Um, my website, which is very, very exciting, will be ready within the next two weeks. So then orders will be all placed online on the website. Until then, just text me or DM me. And I suppose we should give a little shout out to the husband as well, shouldn't we? Should If anybody wants to live the 80-20 dream, where can they buy their treat from? Well, I'm just going to say don't call him a husband because he'll kill me. Oh, um, sorry. No, Your partner. Just don't call him a husband, he'll kill me. Um, so Tipsy Cook on in tipsycook.rc, I think, on Instagram. So, yeah, he, he'd love a few more followers as well because he's not got enough already, has he? <laughs> 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 Great. Well, Sam, thank you so much. I really do appreciate me. my bags of joy that I get every week. And as you can see, I always give you a great write-up on Facebook because... Yeah, you do, and I really appreciate it. I know, but people really say to me every single week, I wish people could cook for me or my food was ready. And this yeah. is the solution for all those Here people. I am. <laughs> so you really are helping so many people. So I know people just stress people out and businesses with your family and stuff but just keep on going please just keep on going do it do it do it i will i don't i don't plan on leaving it anytime soon so <laughs> i love it <laughs> fabulous right thank you so much and i look forward to lots more deliveries yay thank you ever so much for having me <laughs>